thing. <laughs> Good view of my nails. Somebody wanted to see that. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into it. Um, somebody for a prize. Ooh, Farm Animal Day. We haven't had a Monday in a while. Um, yeah, I did like half of them this weekend. I have, I had like, um, like I had like twenty post-its in my house, and I went through like ten of them, and put them on a spreadsheet. So I'll do the other half probably tonight or tomorrow. Okay. Uh, animals. One, two, three, four, five. All right. I need somebody who's going to tell me all three of these at once. Who's up for it? I need somebody who's going to raise their hand digitally or in front of me and tell me. One, two, three, four for Megan. Tanner, Michaela, no thank you. Boo. Fine. All right. Four. Megan. Okay, so mean is where you add them all up and then divide it by the amount, the number of numbers that you have there. Right, so you add them all up and divide by how many numbers you have. I hope one thing that is nice for the people who just took stats is that like now all your notes can be pretty concise, like all together in one place. Median, Megan? Um, it's like where you start on the outside and then like you line them up in a row, like line all your data up like in numerical order and then you cross out and you try to get to the middle. Right, so we're trying to get to the middle number. So you have to put them in order. What if there's two numbers in the middle, Megan? Uh, then you would add them and divide it by two? Yep, Good. just basically go halfway between them. And if you can't figure it out in your head, just use an average. Okay, mode. and then mode is, is it where you take the top one and you divide, you minus the smallest number? No. That's range. <sighs> Shoot, I forgot what mode is. Oh no. Here, I'm gonna give you a hint. So is it just the biggest number? No. All right, you can phone a friend. Do you phone Mitchell or Krista? Krista. Krista. The most often occurring number. Oh, okay. I think occurring has two C's, right? Oh. I'm okay at spelling, but I'm one of those people that always spells something wrong the first try and then immediately recognizes it. All right, I will let you make up for it by telling me what an outlier is, Megan. Like when you have a data set that's like all the numbers are pretty close and then you have one that's just like completely out of whack, random, a, crazy. A data point that doesn't match the others. That uh, maybe isn't even close to the others. Krista, since you helped, I'm gonna give you a prize too, but only if you can give me an example of like an outlier, like a real life situation, just make something up. Okay, she said, she said like if people got like a 90, 91, 92 on a test and then somebody got like a 52 on the test, they'd be an outlier. Also it'd be an outlier if everybody failed the test and one person got an A. So it doesn't have to be like really bad or really low. It could be really high or it could even be in the middle. Okay, animals are, looks like we got a ram and a goat and a cat and a cow and a horse. Megan, what are you thinking? 
or an I'm winner sign? Looks like an I'm a winner sign. Oh, you're not into farm animals today, huh? No way. Krista? This ram? I keep calling, I know I could say a sheep, but I keep calling it a ram because I got like hard corrected by a kid once. Uh, it was like this semester and they were like, oh, that's a ram? And I was like, I am real sorry. And then another kid was like, uh, some females can have horns and they're like, not that kind. And like started like looking up pictures of like sheep. And I was like, okay, I need to like not fight about sheep in a farming community, it turns out. All right, a weighted mean. A weighted mean. A weighted mean is when you find a mean of a data set that have varying weights. All right, and here I wrote directions right there. To find, to do this, multiply the data value times the weight, add them up, and divide by the sum of the weights. So if you're taking a class and you've got five sources, 50% from your test, I'm going to write it out here. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, I'm going to need another row. I'll just write it over here. All right, so this is a test. And that's 50% of your grade. So I'm going to write 0.5. And there's a midterm. And these are 15% of that's 15% of your grade. Your final exam is 20%. Uh, your computer lab work should be 10%. <coughs> and your homework. is 5%. Now, these are all percents, and I'm hoping that this teacher isn't um, too crazy. Uh, so yes, these do add up to 100%. Um, but if they didn't, you would divide by whatever they add up to. And then it says that your scores were an 86 on average for your tests. A 96 for your midterm, your final was an 82, your labs were 98, and you got 100% on your homework. So the next thing we do is we multiply these two. I guess we will need one more column. Multiply these two and then add them all up. So 50% of 86 is 43. 15% of 96 is 14.4. And then you add them all up. <coughs> It's easy to make mistakes when you're doing a weighted mean. So something that you need to be careful to do is, I know you guys are all doing math right now, but stop for one second and look up. Just pause your math. Mitchell, pause. Okay. You see these grades? This person's lowest grade is that 82 on their final, right? Besides that, their grades are pretty high. And they got 100% on their homework grade to the finals weighted more than the homework. If you got something like a C plus average for this kid, you did it wrong. If you get 100%, you did it wrong. A B plus feels pretty right for those scores. So just make sure you're reasonable. I'll give you a second to catch up just in case you're not. Yeah. 
Are you looking at our old notes? Oh, nice. Everybody okay if I move on? You need a little bit more time, Mitchell? Okay. All right, to find the mean of a frequency distribution when you're, so a frequency distribution is like this, when you have like different things that are different weights or different amounts. Um, so we're gonna try that together. We're gonna need some data. Uh, I need somebody who's gonna make up data. Uh, maybe we just won't make up data, let's see. Uh, raise your hand if you have a cat at your house, inside or outside. Nobody here, one, two. All right, let's do uh, how many pets you have at your house. We'll do that. Okay, so we're gonna need a few columns here. Let's see, we'll need the data and we'll need a deviation. That's a midpoint. Frequency, deviation, deviation times frequency, five. I don't know how many rows yet. Depends on how many pets you guys have. Yep. Um, hey, Mitchell, how many pets do you have at your house? Four? Caitlin? Two. One for Krista. Megan? One. One. I've also got one. Tanner? One. One. Michaela? Three? Hey, Emily and David, how many pets do you have at your house? Actual pets. Okay, that's a good sampling. All right, so it looks like we're gonna have four lines here. Actually, maybe I'll make it five and have a category line at the top. Oh, this is just a weighted mean, not a weighted standard deviation, isn't it? Well, okay. I guess we don't need some of these columns. That's all right. We're going to be doing a weighted standard deviation in a minute. Okay. So this is what, how many pets we have? And so first we have our data points and we've got one, two, three, four pets. And then frequency is how many people are, are in each category. So it looks like we have four people who are in, have one pet, and two people who have two pets, and two people who have three pets, and one person who has four pets. And then to figure out your weighted mean, you're going to take your x times your frequency. And then you're going to add them all up. And then you're going to take that number and divide by how many people we have. So we had, what, six, seven, eight, nine people. So go ahead, fill out that column, add them up, and divide by nine. I'm going to give somebody a prize in just a second for doing so.
Now, does this save you a lot of time with this data set? Probably not. There's only nine numbers, right? We could easily add the, all up those nine, just add them up and divide by nine. But if you had something like 800 in this first category, 600 in this category, you see how this would save your time. So you wouldn't have to be like one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, 800 times, right? All right, who's gonna do this one? All right, uh, because Megan and Chris have already won, I wanna give it either to Mitchell or Caitlin. Caitlin, you're one, Mitchell is two, two. Uh, yep. So the average is two. Everybody get that? Two pets. Pretty easy. Okay. I'm not going to make you waste your time by drawing the shapes of the distributions before below. So I just copy pasted. So it like this. First one symmetric. Second one is uniform. So that means that they're all about the same height. Third one is skewed left. You got kind of like this, uh, you see how you got like a tail going off to the left here. This is also called a left tail distribution. They kind of use those interchangeably. And skewed right is also called a right tail distribution. Symmetric, by the way, doesn't have to be like, you see how this isn't perfect? It's pretty close, but do you see like, like just look, if we just zoom in here. You see this height right here on this side doesn't quite match the height on that side. It doesn't have to be perfect to be symmetric. It has to be pretty close to like a bell curve or even on either side. Yeah? Um, so yeah? This is a weighted mean, or like a mean of a frequency distribution, I guess you could say. Um, well, yeah, it's considered a weighted mean. I mean, uh, it's just that instead of having percents in there, we just had whole numbers in there. So it's basically like if you got like a, a big like a table that had like a whole bunch of data in it how you could quickly find the mean without having to actually write out all of those numbers. The um, label for it is on the previous page. Okay. Uh, next up, range. Megan accidentally said this one earlier. Um, this is where you take the highest number and subtract the lowest number. Deviation um, is how far a data point is from the mean. Population variance, which we'll get into later um, about how that's significant in tests and stuff like that. But you, all you need to know right now, this, this is the standard deviation squared. And a population standard deviation is an average deviation. So how far on average all of the points are from the mean. So let's do a really uh, simple example. Um, when I taught this to you, I think in both classes that I taught with you guys, I did it with football. Is that right? You remember this? So down here, I'm going to make up a data set. We need one, two, 
theta, deviation, deviation squared, I think just three lines. We'll just have four data points. I'll just make it up. Uh, let's go with, I guess I don't really need to have any kind of uh, reason behind it. So I'll just put down 10, uh, 13, um, 16, and 40. Let's say it was, it's how old you were when you got your ears pierced. All right. And there are four people here. So this is the data point. The first thing we have to do is it says, according to here, we have to find the mean of the population data set. So we're just gonna add all these up and divide by four. So everybody do that yourself. I got that my population mean is 19.75. You guys remember that this is pronounced mu and that is not an M, that's like a U with a tail off the front. First category is deviation, that's X minus mu. So as you're doing this, you'll notice that most of these are going to be negative. Can somebody tell me for a prize, why are most of the deviations on this data set going to be negative? Go for it, Caitlin. Because, um, 40 is an right, 40 is an outlier. It's kind of strange that somebody got their ears pierced at 40 for the first time. And that outlier really changed the data. An Emma Winterstein or one of these animals setting? All yours. What'd you say? Oh, here you go. <clears throat> Why do we square the deviations? You can't have you can't have negative numbers. Right. No, you keep just talking, I'm sorry. No, that's all. You can't have negative numbers in that column. Right. And the reason why is if look at it right now, everybody look. Nine plus six is 15 plus another three is 18. And if you added these 375s together, you would get exactly the same on both sides. Literally, if we added this column together, it would all zero out. And that's because it's averaging around the, the they're all deviations around the average. And so um, we square them to make them positive first. And then we add them up. Can somebody confirm they got the same numbers I did? Anybody get the same numbers I did? Okay. And you divide that number by four because we have four numbers. That gets you 141 point about 19, and that is the variance. So this right here, this is the population mean. This is the population variance. 
<laughs> and then to go down to a standard deviation, you take the square root of that 141.19. because we originally um, squared them all. We got 11.88 for the population standard deviation. Okay, so the last one that we're going to do, anybody have questions on this one? The last one that we're going to do is a population or a, oh, anybody remember what the difference is between finding a sample standard deviation, a population standard deviation? I will give you a prize for this. Everybody's back in unless Tanner and Michaela want to say something. You guys like saying something? Huh? Saying something for once? One, two, Megan, you remember? Three, Caitlin, no? One, Mitchell. Not from the average. Number. Yes, yes. So you divide by n minus one instead of n. And n is how many um, data points you have. You want another M1 or something? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go back to um, my first page. I'll go back up there in case anybody's still writing it down. And I'm just going to copy down what we've already done because do you remember how we already did like a, a mean of a frequency distribution? We did pets at home, right? The exact same thing again. Only this time we need a few more categories. And for the first few columns, I'm just gonna write down what we've already done. For pets. All right, now if you look at the steps above this that I wrote down, it says how to find the standard deviation of group data. And then it says what we need to do is we need to find the weighted mean, which we have already done, right? And it says find the deviation of each entry from the midpoint, from the midpoint. 
Now, the reason why I wrote from the midpoint, we're not going to have to do this on this one, is because in this one, we all of us just had one pet, two pets, three pets, four pets. But like, let's suppose that it was a range. Like I said, five people have one to two pets and eight people have three to four pets. Then you would, to know what number to multiply by, you take the midpoint of your class. Um, so for this one, it's X minus mu. So this is hard because everybody always wants to use the frequency. Don't use the frequency. Don't use any of that stuff. Just gonna cover it up completely. So I'm gonna do this one right here, one minus two. So these people are one below the average. These people are right on the average. These people are one above the average and these people are two above the average. So X is the data point. So one minus two. No. And this isn't for sample anyway. This is standard deviation of group data. This isn't the sample. Oh, you mean like a different symbol? Yes, it would be an X bar, but this isn't for a sample. It's for a population, but yeah. And there's no difference in the calculation of it, just a difference in like the label. Okay, um, and then we have to make them positive. Pretty easy data set. Anybody just blindly copy me there? And then we're like, oh, I guess I also know what one squared is. Okay, and then the last thing you have to do is you take that squared deviation and you multiply it by the frequency. So it's hard to keep your eye on the right column. We're taking this one times this one. Then we add them up. Divide by, how many people did we have in this data set? Wasn't it nine? Six, seven, eight, nine, yep. What is that, 1.11? <clears throat> When do we do the n minus one? We this isn't for okay. So I've I've been confusing everybody apparently. So look at this. You see where I said this is the difference between finding a sample standard deviation and populist standard deviation. This was just sitting by itself. I didn't even I didn't do an example of the sample standard deviation at all. That's not what this is. This is for a population. It's just for grouped data. I didn't bother doing the sample standard deviation because I figured you guys can minus one when you divide. You don't need an example of that, my bad. Okay, so this is now sigma squared. That's the variance. And how do we find out the standard deviation once you have the variance? Square root. So again, this was for a population and something you might want to write down is that a sample standard deviation is a S. I'm going to write that up here and a population standard deviation is this little sigma. <coughs> and as Mitchell just mentioned, a sample mean uh, is X bar, looks like this. Okay, so that was a lot. How's it coming back, Kaylin? Krista? Michaela, how about you? Okay, Tanner, you're good. Okay, so homework's on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight problems. which of course means you have to do six of them if you're doing 75% of your homework and still getting full credit for it. So 
Um, if you have no more questions, you can go ahead and log off when you're ready. I'm going to stop the recording. Bye, David. <laughs>